A man finds himself lying in garbage with a bold crow attempting to perch on his mouth. Just as the bird targets his eye, he surprises himself by rising. Confusion sets in when after lighting a cigarette, smoke emerges not only from his nose but also from all over his injured body. Frightened, he examines his wounds, realizing he's still alive despite them. When he tries to speak, his voice sounds terrifying, and his own reflection scares him as well. His skin, a mixture of red and blue, gives him the appearance of a zombie. Unwilling to live as a monster, he leaps off a cliff in an attempt to end it all, only to discover that zombies don't die so easily. Heartbroken, he takes refuge in a cave, where hunger nearly kills him. After passing out, he wakes to find that he has consumed a raw rabbit. Repulsed and confused about his new existence, he seeks to understand how he became a creature of the night. His quest for answers leads him back to where people dwell, walking in a manner that makes him resemble a zombie closely. Along the way, he comes across a hoodie left by a girl. Wearing it to keep warm, he encounters its owner, Sonia, a crime reporter, who shows more concern for her missing phone in the hoodie than for the hoodie itself. Returning her phone while concealing his terrifying voice, he realizes that Sonia perceives him as merely a needy child, even offering him money. The next day, driven by hunger, he attempts to steal eggs from a nest but faints from weakness. Upon awakening, he is confronted once again with the grim reality of his condition. Distraught by his actions and desperate to recall his life as a human, he finds himself caught in the conflict between his dwindling humanity and his new terrifying form. Our zombie hero realized he needed to fit in with the living. To achieve this, he had to learn to act human, facing challenges such as a frightening voice and an unusual walk. He committed to changing himself, starting at an old gym where he first attempted to walk on a treadmill. Though difficult initially, he soon learned to walk like everyone else. Next, he focused on his speech. Imagine him with a stick in his mouth, repeating the alphabet like a child learning to speak, gradually gaining control over his terrifying voice. He didn't stop there. With the aid of a book, he also learned to use chopsticks and basic table manners. Before long, he was not just pretending, but living as a human, wearing clothes he quietly took from town and setting up a home in a graveyard. One day, his new life took a turn when he witnessed a man being killed and thrown off a cliff. He rushed over and found the man still barely alive, who entrusted him with a key before dying. Our zombie did the honorable thing by burying the man, who was later identified as Detective Kim from a business card. Driven by curiosity, he went to Kim's office, finding it abandoned but with food. However, despite his efforts to fit in, consuming human food made him ill, reminding him that only raw meat suited him. Needing money to buy the only food he could eat, he started packing pizzas, a simple job that led to an unexpected opportunity. A call for Detective Kim to find a missing dog arose. Although reluctant to invite more trouble, he saw it as a means to meet people and perhaps learn about his past. So with determination and apprehension, he assumed Kim's role, hoping each new encounter would help him discover who he was before turning into a nocturnal creature. So our friend, the zombie, decided it was time to blend in better with the living. He began by disguising his zombie appearance with makeup and donning Detective Kim's clothes. His mission? To search for a lost dog, which seemed straightforward. However, he soon discovered that the dog's young owner could only compensate him with a penny for his efforts. Upset, he couldn't resist scolding the boy. Just then, Sonia, the boy's aunt and someone the zombie was acquainted with, appeared. Panicking, he attempted to flee, but Sonia, thinking quickly, grabbed a helmet and knocked him out from a distance. Lying there motionless, Sonia checked if he was breathing and found no signs of life, leading her to believe he had died. She called an ambulance, but to everyone's surprise, he woke up inside it, frightening everyone. After being taken to the hospital, he felt extremely hungry again. On the verge of attacking a man due to his hunger, he refrained when he noticed a dog. Feeling pity for the dog instead of viewing it as food, he decided against harming it. Hungry and in need, he learned of a place offering free soup and rushed there, only to find out the free soup had been depleted. However, there was a condition. He could obtain the soup if he danced for a hotel's advertisement. After dancing impressively, he received his soup, but then sneaked into the kitchen for some raw meat. The chef spotted him and shouted, causing a commotion. Adding to the excitement, Sonia and another detective were at the hotel, hoping to apprehend him. But the zombie, in a panic, managed to elude them and ran into the forest seeking tranquility. 
As he began feeling less like a zombie, he contemplated returning to Detective Kim's office. En route, he saw a news report about a child's death that infuriated him so much he shattered the screen. After cooling down, he returned to the office, only to be confronted by the landlord demanding the rent. Our zombie, who's taken over Detective Kim's office, realizes he needs to pay rent. While thinking about ways to make money, he remembers meeting Sonia. She had come by before, worried he would sue her because she accidentally hit him with a helmet. Sonia tried to settle things by offering him money, but in a moment of anger, he ripped up her offer. Now, thinking of a way out of his money troubles, he figures he could ask her for $100,000, hoping it would fix everything. Just as he's about to ask Sonia for the money, he sees her getting kidnapped. Jumping into action like a hero, not a zombie, he saves her from the kidnappers and brings her back to the office. There, he tells Sonia that the helmet incident really messed up his head, making it hard for him to work as a detective. He says he really needs that settlement money. Sonia, feeling really bad, says she's broke, but offers to work as his assistant instead. Before they can talk more, a famous actress shows up, needing Detective Kim's help to find her missing daughter, and offers a big reward. Sonia steps up, saying they'll take the case, and starts asking questions to get clues, using her experience as a crime reporter. Seeing how good Sonia is, the zombie decides to officially accept her help. They figure out that a meditation center, which seems normal during the day, is actually hiding a big secret. At night, it turns into a base for a cult that brainwashes kids, using drugs and making them work. Here, Sonia smartly hides in a drum to sneak into a suspicious meditation center at night. Her goal was clear, to find the missing daughter of a famous actress. Despite the danger, she finds the girl. But as they try to escape, they run into the cult leader. He quickly realizes Sonia has found out their secret. As his follower tries to catch Sonia, suddenly our zombie hero comes in, using playing cards accurately to stop the threat. A tense face-off happens, with the cult leader trying to hit Sonia seriously. Just in time, the zombie steps in, taking the hit easily, his being a zombie making him not feel pain. Angry and ready to confront the leader, Sonia's request stops him, and then, the police come to catch the bad guy. With the mission done, Sonia visits our zombie at his place, shocked by seeing his badly injured body, full of big cuts. She then wonders, could Detective Kim be a zombie? Looking for answers online, Sonia's doubts increase as her brother casually talks about zombies being real. She remembers not feeling his heartbeat, his not getting hurt by the cult leader's weapon, things she couldn't overlook. Even with her brother doubting it, Sonia prepares to face him, asking for her payment, while feeling sudden, sharp pain. Expecting the worst from the zombie, Sonia is instead quickly taken to the hospital, saved by the being she thought might hurt her. Waking up safe, she sees the zombie's kind side, deciding to help him find out who he is. Sonia starts by asking about his first memories as a zombie, leading to finding a lighter in a watch, hints to his earlier life. Wanting to solve the puzzle, Sonia uses social media, posting pictures of these items, hoping someone knows something about the zombie's lost past. Soon, Sonia gets a strange call from a guy who says he knows about the lighter she talked about online. He wants to meet her, but he doesn't show up. Instead, she runs into Sean, someone she knows from the recent sad event of a young girl's murder, which a zombie saw. Their meeting ends quickly when Sean hears his mom has disappeared. Right away, the zombie and Sonia start looking for her, leading them to the mountains near their town. Their search becomes risky when a wild pig, big and mean, attacks Sonia. The zombie jumps in bravely to save her, fighting the pig. Even though the pig is strong, the zombie comes up with a dangerous idea. He tricks the pig into chasing him towards a cliff, then moves away at the last second, making the pig fall. But the pig pulls the zombie down with it. Sonia is scared, thinking the worst, but then she sees the zombie coming back, dragging the pig. When they get back, Sean's mom hugs the zombie, thinking he's her son. This touching moment makes the zombie think of his own mom, who might be waiting for him. Going further, the zombie talks about seeing the murdered girl with a doll, something Sonia and her detective friend didn't know about. This clue suggests the zombie might be linked to the girl. Even after a lot of looking into the girl's murder, they hadn't seen any sign of a doll. Things get weirder when the detective finds his office messed up, but nothing valuable, not even money, is gone. Just the lighter. He thinks Sean might have something to do with it, especially because the lighter is very important to his history. When the zombie, Sean, confronts Sean about his unclear past, 
Sean shocks him by saying he killed a girl. Stunned and thinking his zombie state was a punishment for this supposed crime, he thinks about ending his life with a power drill. But luck steps in, the drill breaks down, and he lives through the scary moment, deciding to leave the city. At the same time, Sonia digs deeper into the case. Meeting the dead girl's dad, she finds out the zombie, seen in a family picture, was actually the girl's guard. This changes everything Sonia thought she knew about the zombie, and she can't wait to tell him. But she finds his house and office empty, with only pictures of Sean left behind. As Sonia goes to Sean's place to face him, the zombie, unable to call her because of no phone signal, feels something is wrong and hurries to protect her. Then a dark truth comes out. Sonia is trapped by Sean and his wife, who admit to causing the girl's death. Sonia cleverly escapes from Sean's wife using a spray can as a weapon and meets the zombie outside. They realize the zombie was wrongly blamed. He was actually protecting the girl. As they deal with the shock, Sean tries to escape, knowing his plan is failing. The cops catch Sean's wife and Sean swears revenge. In a final move, Sean tricks the zombie into coming to an empty place, planning to kill him with a car bomb. Sean thinks this will kill the zombie, not knowing his real strength. Amazingly, the zombie survives the explosion. Remembering he was the girl's guard in the awful Christmas day, he tried to save her from Sean's evil plan. Minho, thought to be just a zombie, asked Sean about a past dark event. Sean had knocked Minho out and left him to die in a ditch after shooting him. The proof, a bullet scar, was still on Minho's body. Remembering everything, Minho wants revenge and confronts Sean about the young girl's murder. Even as Sean shoots at him, Sean, thinking a headshot would kill Minho, is stopped by his own mom, who turns out to be Minho's real mom, and calls out to him. This shocks Minho, leading to Sean's end. The story then moves to the sad time of Minho's mom's funeral, after which Minho decides to leave the city. He leaves his detective earnings behind, taking only what he needs. But his zombie hunger hits, and he faints before he can hurt anyone. Waking up, he finds himself in his detective office with lots of chicken. Sonia shows up, explaining that Minho's hunger makes him turn into a zombie. She sets up a test to help him control his hunger. Minho must not eat the chicken tied in front of him for three days. Despite Sonia watching, Minho's strong hunger breaks out around 30 hours, and he eats the chicken wildly. After a narrow escape, where Minho, acting like a zombie, almost attacks Sonia, she manages to knock him out with a frying pan. When he wakes up, Sonia tells him about the risk he poses when he can't control himself. Showing him the frying pan, she convinces him that for his own good and everyone else's, it's best to stay in the office. This event makes Minho take up his role as Detective Kim again and start looking into how the real Kim died. Sonia shares what she found. Kim, who lived alone, was killed while visiting his dad's grave by a man named Nappen who does illegal stuff and has just got out of prison. Nappen, knowing someone is pretending to be Kim, hires detectives to follow Sonia and Minho. Their search takes them to a salon Kim went to before he died, where they find out he was researching a Dr. No, known for harmful animal tests. At Dr. No's place, Minho immediately knows the doctor is Kim's murderer. Meanwhile, the detective doctor, No Hire, tries to catch Minho with complex traps and sneak attacks, but fails every time. Annoyed and scared by Minho's toughness and almost magical skills, the detective gives up, turns down Dr. No's money, and says he can't believe how non-human Minho seems. Dr. No felt a win, not because his first plan worked, but because he got Minho's DNA during the failed catch. This DNA proved Minho was a zombie, an important part for the doctor's crazy experiments. Wearing a mask and carrying chemicals, Dr. No sneaks into Minho's office, knocks him out to take him to his lab for more tests. Here, Dr. No shares his goal, a risky try to bring back his dead wife by making her a zombie, a move caused by his struggle to accept her death. This grim goal caused a fight with Detective Kim, who found Dr. No's illegal actions leading to Kim's death. Unknown to the doctor, the chemicals he threw away were the same ones that by chance brought Minho back to life, just like his wife. Meanwhile, Sonia, figuring out where Minho might be, ends up at Dr. No's clinic. Seeing signs of someone inside, she breaks in, finding not just Minho and Dr. No's zombie wife, but also the detectives who worked for Dr. No. Now locked up after finding out about his zombie wife, Sonia quickly lets the captives go, including Minho, right as Dr. No's zombie wife turns dangerous. Minho steps in, saving Sonia and tries to talk to the zombie wife in their special zombie way. But their moment ends when Dr. No comes in, gun ready, 
ordering his zombie wife to attack. In the mess that follows, Minho gets the gun from Dr. No, by accident shoots the zombie wife in the head, killing her right away. Seeing the sad end of his zombie wife, Dr. No is filled with sadness. Taking advantage of the situation, Sonia calls the police, which leads to Dr. No being arrested, briefly solving the case of Detective Kim's death. However, the story takes an unexpected turn when Dr. No, after drinking his own zombie-making potion, survives a police van crash and comes back to life as a zombie. The team comes up with a plan to catch the new zombie Dr. No by taking his wife's body from the morgue. But Dr. No is smarter and goes straight to Minho's house, ignoring the trap. Surprisingly, instead of going after Minho, Dr. No kidnaps Sonia. A fight happens, where Dr. No takes a gun from Sonia's detective friend, not worried about being shot because he's now a zombie. Just as things get more intense, Sonia and Minho manage to take the gun from Dr. No. Even with a clear shot, Minho can't bring himself to kill Dr. No, showing his kind heart. As a final try, the team uses masks and a chemical made by Dr. No to calm him down. When they think it's over, Dr. No attacks again, putting one of the detectives in danger. Minho, trying to save the detective, makes the tough choice to kill Dr. No, giving up his hope for a cure to his zombie state. Upset that he can't become human again, Minho chooses to be alone, leaving Sonia to work as a detective by herself. The story moves forward a year, and Sonia gets invited to a Halloween party, giving her hope of seeing Minho again. Wearing a white suit, Minho is there, and their meeting is mixed with happiness and sadness as they find out there's a new murder case to solve.